Hey, and uh, welcome everyone to tonight's edition of the Power of Plants and Natural Healing. Um, this is the sixth episode, I think, now. We've uh, been joined again by the amazing Matt Corns. I think our first episode was really informative, but we've got so much more to say. And with it being over the Christmas break, lots of people are feeling a little bit unwell. That's what we say. But we're going to maybe dispel, dispel some myths today about that and talk about the gut biome, what mucus is, and really what, what is actually being ill. And I am absolutely delighted to have Matt here today to try and, in a very simple way, explain what's really going on with the body um, and what we can do about it to try and keep it ticking along. So without further ado, thank you very much for joining me, Matt. How are you? Are you well? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me again. Oh, I'm delighted. So, did 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 you um, feel uh, unwell over Christmas? A lot of people had coughs and colds and things like that. Yeah, yeah people around me, I have. Um, my son was a bit poorly on Thursday. I had people asking me a lot of questions and getting a lot of symptoms and basically asking for a bit of advice and what they can do about it. Yeah. So, so, okay. So, would would you say when people say that they're ill, they're coming down with something? You know, it re what is really going on in the body? How does the body really work? Because it's not exactly what they tell us, is it? It's not. No. And I think what they do, a lot of people overcomplicate it. So, I have a little, little bit of a little backstory of how the body works, and I'll try and keep it simple. Uh, we take the body as being like a car. It's got a lot of things going on, and not everyone's a mechanic, and none of us are doctors, <laughs> other than myself. And let's keep it nice and simple. So with a car, we all know that we put fuel in a car, be it petrol or diesel. When we put the petrol and diesel in, we know it runs the engine. So that's pretty much like us eating and drinking. But every time we put something in, what the car does is, is there's fuel filters, there's oil filters, there's filtration because we know that the engine needs to run and our body is the engine, it is the uh, what well, keeps the body going. So when we're filtering the fuel, we're also combusting, so the, the body's converting the energy that we're putting in there to basically make the body work. But we also need oxygen for the car, we need oxygen for ourselves. So when we're breathing, what people need to remember is we breathe through our mouths and we breathe through our noses. Our body's adapted very, very well to look after itself. It repairs itself and it reacts to our environments. So pretty much as the car has a filter for the air, we have a filtration system in our body and our nasal passages, and we have hair within our um, breathing tubes, if you like, and that acts as a filter. So when we breathe through our noses, it filters. Not so much when we breathe through our mouths, it's not as um, productive and as efficient. If we can relate that to something like hay fever, everyone knows if it's somebody just mowed the lawn or they've sniffed a flower and they get pollen, the pollen will go into the nose, it'll trap into these hairs, and we get a reaction. We'll, I start to water, we'll start to cough, we'll start to react, everyone acknowledges a fever. So one of the things the body's doing is actually grabbing hold of the pollen, wraps it in a bit of mucus, and basically that stops it going into the lungs and causing other problems. So our body reacts, it creates something, it's got a defense mechanism. So sometimes when you're trying to stop the body doing something, it's not working efficiently. What happens in a car, you can go and change the filter, no problem. What we do with as far as our body's concerned, it's a little bit different. So this mucus production, we can reduce by, you know, not so much the hay fever tablets, uh, something like natural honey, there's natural remedies to actually you know, address that. Yeah, okay, so really mucus is our friend, right, isn't it? it? Is. Uh, your body's got to get rid of these toxins, which is what you're saying. And yes. one of the ways it does that is through through, mu through mucus. So I guess one of the first things that we have to notice is you know, re if you reduce the amount of toxins you're taking in, you will be less ill <laughs> you will be Ill, Ill less frequently because you don't have to change these filters. I mean, you're not going to get the cheapest you know, fuel, you're going to get the supreme fuel maybe, and, and maybe that looks after your engine a bit more, right? This is what makes the difference. Now, there's a few things to now I expand on that. The environment that we're actually in is full of toxins. Something like plug-in air fresheners, deodorants, hairsprays. If you look at what's around us, 
or even uh, washing um, softener, fabric softener. That puts waxes on clothes, we put it onto our skin, we wear it. We're basically overloading the filter and the filter can only do so much. So what yeah. we need to do is actually keep that efficient. Well, I, I think this is a really important point is, um, you know, once I started going down this path, there's a few things that I'm doing, but I realized how many toxins are around us. And, you know, the first thing is, is don't get overwhelmed, right? Because, <laughs> otherwise, you know, you're always the one day. But if you change one thing a week, yes. you'll be able to do it. But, 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 there are, but there are just so many toxins, even, you know, carpets. And uh, I've got here, this is like a fake fur. That's, God, that's plastic. I mean, I can't yeah. see it, but there's microplastics in, in my air. And when you think, yeah. you know, it could drive you mad, but you, there are things you can do every week. So, I mean, well, where would you advise people to start? I mean, what, what would you say? It really is now keep it natural. Keep everything as natural as possible. If you look at the plugins, the plugin plugin is oils, uh, synthetics, anything that smells nice. Even some of the candles, the chemicals. We're surrounding ourselves with nice things, but the chemicals. What we can do is use things like atomizers, nebulizers, uh, essential oils, rather than the chemicals. Now keep it nice and simple. And like with a room as well, though, open window. A lot of us, especially over the winter, we've closed the doors, we've closed the curtains, we turn the heating up and everything's stewing. So then there's no fresh air, there's no circulation. We call it air changes. We do it in the labs. The, the, the lab in the air, the air in the lab, sorry, needs to have air changes because we're breathing out. Every time we're breathing out, our body's filtered everything and we're getting rid of carbon dioxide. We're getting rid of what the body doesn't want. That's just going back into the room. If the room doesn't have the window open, it's just going to circulate. Yeah, that's a great point, that is. And and also the sunlight, because the UV light will, right. will kill yeah, bacteria and, and all sorts of things. But if you don't let the light in, and, and I'm guilty of this, oh, do we have to change the curtains because I'm going out <laughs> to work? So yeah. it's dark when I leave and dark when I come back. Do we need to open the curtains? Actually, it's pretty yeah. good for your health because you, you get to clean your house, right? Yeah, very good to get that air change. Another one that a lot, I like to bring it up, is a lot that we used to do was fantastic for the body. When people were poorer, when you go back to the 1800s, they used to take them to the seaside. And we'll all say, fresh sea air. Mm. They used to take people down in literally old-fashioned wheelchairs and carry them into the sea for salt therapy. The fresh sea air. Now, salt has an amazing benefits, and it's a very simple therapy. I had a bath this evening. I put sodium bicarbonate in, in there. No, so the body's absorbing. It's a sponge. It's a filter. But by putting it in the actual water, I'm absorbing magnesium, the minerals that I need. But fresh air, it's, it's one of them symbolisms that we've had in life that you need some fresh air. It's, it's, I've said it to my children all the time. Can't have cabin fever. We can't that. lock ourselves. <laughs> fresh air and sunlight, it sounds really simple. Exactly. You you were talking about something earlier, and um, I, and I think for some for some people this sounds oh that's just too simple, but really it's really important. And the analogy that you just made with the car is is really really important. I mean, you, you when your filters get blocked, you've got to get rid of it. Um, so you can either help that process and help yourself heal, or you can dampen it and stop it from happening. And you know, to my mind, you just prolonging it it's, it's not a good thing to to stop it from happening right it really is and to, to really explain the body's a phenomenal piece of equipment and we've got these filtration systems and we focus on the filtration system so we've got breathing so we've got the air filters we look at blood we've got our kidneys we've got our liver doing all its functions we've got so many parts of the body are actually filters now with a car, it's really simple. Go to the mechanic, have a service. Everyone knows after 12 months of driving so much, we need to change it. Mm. Now, if we look at um, every aspect of it, so as you're getting tired and you know, you're feeling lethargic, and a lot, especially recently, there are oh, somebody's coming down with something, they look drained. That's basically meaning the filters are blocked. You've got an environment around you, you're taking on all the toxins, your body starts to slow down. Like the car going up the hill, it's draining. No, we need mm -hmm. to change the filters, we need to change the environment, go for a walk, get some fresh air, get rid of the toxins if you can. There's very simple remedies of you know, looking after that. Okay, okay. so 
I think this is really important because if we, once you get to the point that you're feeling ill, you don't want to go outside. Spotting these signs early and doing something about it, it is probably critical. I mean, I, over Christmas, I, I felt very tired. Um, you know, you, you work as well, you know, working up to Christmas and trying to get everything done. Yeah. You're feeling anxious. Um, and I, did, I didn't want to do and go out for, you know, for what like I would normally do, let's say when it's more sunny as well. But I also think yeah. perhaps my environment, you know, all the stress before work, before Christmas was probably contributing to it. What, what do you think about that? Stress is a huge factor. And I'll explain about the car and we put the fuel in it, but it's also the people you allow into your car. So you can, you know, by people getting in that are causing stress, basically the environment is you're adding to the stress. So you can recognize the signs and your body's wearing down. There's a lot you can do about that, which means, you know, taking a bath, put the salts in the bath, relax. Now, if we go and take a, a run in the car, open the window, turn the music on, and relax. One of the big things the body does, it gets anxiety, we get stressed. What happens chemically in the body then is our cortisol levels increase. So if anyone's struggling with stress and they feel tired, what happens is the cortisol level increases, which for most people that I mean you have breathing problems, for men the testosterone levels go, for women it changes hormone imbalances, and it is down to stress. So when you're feeling worn out, you really need to do put your feet up, chill out, have a nice bath, listen to some nice music, turn the TV off, and basically you know, take in your environment a little bit uh, more relaxed. Yeah, so it, it, this is really important, cortisol levels, because it's about also about motivation and about whether you can be bothered to make the right food or you can be bothered to make the right decisions as well. Because if you're just feeling as well, like the world's on your shoulders, not only will it make you feel ill, but it's it, you're much less likely to want to do something about it. And, and I found with my personal training, my, client, my clients, and you, you've had the same, right? The hardest thing was to try and get people out of a rut that they yes. were in. And, and they didn't massively care. They cared about other people, but they didn't care about themselves as much. And I think a lot of it is to do with the diet and the psychology working together. So they both bounce off each other. And you know, you've got to look after your mental health. And I really love what you're saying there. And it's what you advocate for. Relax. The first thing people have to do is relax, right? Definitely. The breathing exercises, and everyone can actually do it with themselves just to prove the point. Take 10 minutes out. Turn everything off, turn the lights off. Just take 10 minutes. Take deep Ooh. breaths. One of the big things that we're all struggling with, we don't breathe properly. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you're a box. So it doesn't matter if you're, no, you don't go out, you don't do anything. We don't breathe. Now you want to take a deep breath, not from the chest, from the belly. Just 10 minutes. And most people, if they try 10 minutes, you actually feel a little bit, not drunk, but you'll feel the body actually cleanse itself. Just meditation you don't have to think about anything or not make any silly noises just breathe take 10 minutes out we're all in such a fast pace we technically we're hyperventilating we're changing the ph in our blood just by the way we live yeah that's a good point and actually i watched the video the other day about about breathing and i used to listen to this about meditation and breathing i'm like i am breathing well actually are you if you're breathing through your mouth it's very short breath when you're yeah. breathing through your nose, it's a much longer breath. <clears throat> it really is. It makes a massive difference. And you're like, oh, yes. And But there's a lot of people who seem to struggle to breathe through it through their nose. Either, it's to me, that what I'm seeing, some of it's habit, because it feels like if you don't breathe through your nose, your nose sort of becomes blocked, and then you can't breathe through your nose, so then you don't breathe through your nose. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and then but the other the other time maybe some people have got you know sinus issues or you know whatever it is how do you is, is there a way that people think that something people can do to help themselves breathe better through their nose there is and it's a very good example breathing through your nose if you've got any problems with breathing through your nose and you feel almost to the point that you're not taking a breath that can be quite a few different signs it can obviously be medical conditions I've had a deviated septum, I've had surgery for mine, so that was, that was my issue. But also with diet as well, um, you've got mucous membranes, and we were saying the importance of mucus, but we can overstimulate mucous membranes. Things like milk, even chocolate, unfortunately, I'm afraid, actually stimulate mucus production. 
Now, we're all believe that milk is fantastic and milk is great. It's not actually that good. You need to look into it in a lot more detail and probably an old, an old, a full, full video on its, um, on its own. But things like that actually make things worse. Oh, I was guilty. I used to love milk. I mean, I still love milk, actually, but I I just don't have it very often. And the cheese. And, and every time I used to like, have a yogurt or, or have some milk, <clears throat> I was <clears throat> always... <clears throat> yeah. doing this after and, it, and, and um, it's mucus production and it is and if i was ill with a cold it, i'd have that as comfort food but it's the worst thing that you can have isn't it you're actually promoting it like, we, like we, we have said the mucus is a defense mechanism it's a mechanical action that the body does to trap what it doesn't like so the body's doing what it's supposed to do but you can overstimulate it now so it, when somebody's got a cold one of the first things they need to do is don't take any milk. No, hot teas, warm, uh, steam. Steam's a fantastic, you know, very simple remedy. We don't always need to be taking tablets. We don't always need to be taking something. Something as simple as steam. You know, we can put eucalyptus in there. Um, you can use a nebulizer and you know, all the benefits of that just to clear the system out. But mm -hmm. you know, by stopping the dairy, stopping the chocolates and increasing the vitamin D, the vitamin C and a little bit of fresh air makes all the difference. We've got a little question here, but just to, just yeah. to say that on, on the nebulizer and the thing, I've just recently bought one. Like my yeah. son finds it difficult to breathe through his nose. It's to do with what he used to do as a child. I think he's got narrow sinuses now, probably because he wasn't using his nose and therefore yeah. they haven't developed. I mean, this, this, this like um, Christina said on here, children really have to do this because otherwise they, I think there's more and more uh, adults with these narrow laser passages because they weren't even taught to breathe as a child so therefore yeah. you know as your body develops through being the child up through adolescence it'll decide what it is and it's like well it's not really breathing through the nose so i'm not going to do much about it i think it's a lot to do with the environment um yes. and so i've recently bought a, a, ne a nebulizer and um but i've also got a diffuser and you can get organic natural like eucalyptus don't yeah. get anything with put toxins in because otherwise you'd just be in the object, right? Yep. But, but, Christi but Christina's, sorry, Christina has asked, what about raw milk? Raw milk, yes, definitely. Raw milk and kefir, things like that. There are a lot of benefits because they do contain things very good for the gut. We need the gut health. Now our body, if you look at the mechanism of how our body is converting things, it is down to bacteria. Our gut is basically digesting food that mechanically changes and gives us the energy. So raw milk, basically, if it's not been touched too much by humans, it's usually good. Things like uh, kefir, and we got a lot of drinks that have got um, prebiotics, probiotics, they are beneficial. Yeah, I, th I think, you know, the idea that we are sort of separate from these microorganisms, we have to understand that there are more cells in our body that are not us, Yes. Then there are. Yeah. In fact, where do we stop and where do we start? And this is where these broad spectrum antibiotics um, and this, you know, the, the, the use of the, yeah. or, or just trying to think that bacteria are like alien to us. It's no, we we need them, but we need the good guys. Right. So yeah. do, do you want to talk a little bit about your experience of, of gut health? And um, we've chatted about this before and I think your knowledge is fantastic. Well, what would you share with people here today? What do you think the most important thing is? You touched on a very critical point there, and I don't want to be too politically incorrect or correct. Antibiotics. Now, you've just said then we've got all this, we'll call it foreign enzymes and uh, bacteria. When you take an antibiotic, you kill everything. So I won't say antibiotics don't work. They do work, but they kill the good and the bad. And the problem you're left with is everything's gone. So, friendly fire. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. So you get rid of the problem, but you get rid of the benefit then. So what you'll tend to hear is they've had a full dose of antibiotics and then they get ill again. And they'll get ill again and they get ill again. So in scientific terms, when you take an antibiotic, it takes between six and nine months for your body to recover. That's wow. why a doctor won't Denied carry on prescribing. So that's how much... Wow. Yeah, that's how much damage you've done in there. So when something's going on, look at the root cause. So if you've got a chest infection, there's other ways to do it. We can actually use a nebulizer and we can use the gut health, things like wild oregano oil. 
and the kefir and the uh, probiotics, they're the ones that help your body to fight. You don't want to go in there. It's going in with a bulldozer, basically, where by changing the environment and changing simple things, we can actually do the repair. One of the, the big ones as well, when people are poorly, they don't want to eat. There's a good reason why they don't want to eat, because the body needs to get rid of everything. Mm -hmm. So this is where fasting comes in, right? And sometimes you, you crave, you might crave something, but it, uh, but, or sometimes you don't want to, or sometimes you, it's the opposite way, you don't want to eat. But sometimes these cravings aren't really your body talking, it's your your bad guys talking, right? Maybe it's the, it's the parasites. And fasting is so beneficial. Can, can you talk a little a little bit about, yeah, what if, if you're starting getting uh, cold symptoms or you start getting a rash or your doctor's diagnosis with, with this, that and the other, but what, what do you think the first thing somebody should, should do? One of the first ones, listen to your body. Uh, I think when people are poorly, they get this misinterpretation or, and I think it's historical, you need to fuel it. You need to eat. Oh, they've not eaten all day long. Oh, they're going to be so tired. No, the body's trying to repair itself. Every time you eat, you're putting your body under stress. So when you're trying to digest things, your body's putting energy into that digestion. When you're poorer, and that's you not know, if you're sick and things go out both ends and your body's getting rid of everything, that's exactly what it's trying to do. Get rid of everything. It wants to reset. Once it's reset, it's just basically we're trying to get rid of the foreign stuff it doesn't like. The, the body's very good at recognising what it doesn't want. Yeah. So it creates the mucus, it makes you poorly, you're sick, it comes out the other end, it's basically get rid. And if you look at what doctors do and practitioners will do is, I'll give you an, uh, an anti-diarrhea tablet, an anti-sickness tablet, and all that is doing is trapping it inside for longer. So like you said, though, you prolong in the problem. Mm-hmm. Let the body um, do what it needs to do. Let it do what it needs to do and just support yourself through it. And if it's a particularly bad bout that you're going through, then, okay, listen, if, if we're talking about emergencies, we're talking about emergencies. But, but quite often we can cope with these things. And then what you have to do is you have to learn from that lesson and think, right, what did I do to make myself you know so so, so sick did, can, is there other toxins i can avoid because it's a big wake up call when you and i've been you know we, we we work together to try and help people get over various issues and and when you really look at it very often the root cause is something somebody is doing and the reason why they're doing it is because everybody else has managed to get away with it but they haven't but what people don't realize is like how i live my life even though i can say oh i eat that and i eat that you don't know what I'm doing every day. I, you know, the, the toxins I'm in my house, and we're not, there's not two of the same people. So what might be really, you know, toxic environment for one person, for, for another person, they might, however, have that toxin. They might eat, drink milk, but the rest of their life and the environment's not the same. So they get away with it. I think touching on that point as well, though, and it's called terrain theory. And it'll be an explanation of why some people get ill and some don't. You get a husband and wife and one gets a cold and one doesn't. So it's not exactly, you know, they cough and splutter. You've got the germs and bacteria all over you, but you don't get the cold. The explanation to that by a doctor will be a little bit sparse. There are people that, you know, we're trying to explain it here. It is terrain theory. You might get the bacteria, but if your body's ready for it and your defences are up and you've been looking after your gut and you're keeping your environment as now, as great as possible you'll get the, the the viruses the bacteria they'll be hitting your body but your body's ready for it it's got its guard up and it's ready to fight this is right isn't it and then when you look at december time the number of people that you know don't have the right daily intake of vitamin c and zinc for instance and yeah. they're not stored in the body if you don't take it every day it's most well I, you know i ate an orange two days ago it's, it's not this you can't have it now it's not there but also vitamin D. I mean, you need sure. uh, 20 minutes of a full sun. I mean, really full sun in the height of summer to get your vitamin D. And it's only a lot of people I even see going around in the summer fully clothed. You know, they might even wear caps in this, you know, because it's fashionable or for whatever other reason. So they don't even store that up. Now it's only then stored in your body for three months. The, the actual, More than 50% of people are deficient in vitamin D by December. 
Yeah, but that, that's one of the big things as well. We're not exposed, and this is why it does become seasonal. And that's mm -hmm. why it's not flu season as such, but the sun's gone down. We're not out, we're not exposed, we're not in the park, we're not going for a walk. It's cold, we cover up and we get inside. So we're not right. exposed to the UV. The UV is what's given us the vitamin D. This is right. And, and the, you know, even with cloud cover, the problem with cloud cover is that um, it can filter out the, the, the rays of light that we need to, to make the vitamin D. Maybe sun's coming through, but it's got the right, right wavelengths. And so, yeah. you know, this time of year, it's very easy to, to say a cough or a cold is going around. But actually, you know, is it? Because there are many other different explanations for that. Because certainly, not not everybody gets get, get that. And, and and like we were talking before about the gut biome, I'm seeing, and I don't know what what, what you think about this, but I'm seeing more and more evidence that probably m many things that people suffer from are actually parasites. So things that you can see, not these invisible micro magic viral particle things but actually things that are in your body but unless you've got the tests unless they're running the test to say you haven't you haven't got it then then they're not linking you know they're not linking it with parasites but i'm seeing this more and more uh, about parasites uh, are you yeah. yeah definitely so and one of the um and we did mention it in a previous conversation as well though if you're getting the cravings it's not always you doing the craving You've got a craving for sugar, a craving for something specific. It can be the parasites craving it. And the parasites are creating the toxins that are wearing you down. And I think one of the studies I read is about 70% of people have parasites. It really is that common. It's scary to think about, but it's the truth. It, 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 it is because it's not something that we're we're sort of uh, being being talked about it and it's also you'll be okay because you you know you'll wear some kind of face covering but it's like no it's it's in your food it's it's, it's about how many times you wash your hands forget about that they are everywhere but we can't sterilize the environment we, can't we sterilize. don't want to sterilize the environment no. our bodies are ready for it one of the big things if we go over what changed in history no, my grand passed away some time ago, but I never remember my grand having a cold. Don't remember mm -hmm. a sniffling, don't remember her coughing as such, but she didn't have central eating. She was harder, she wrapped up, she was you know, very robust about things, but she ate well, she slept well. She was a stickler for you know, drinking her tea and drinking her water. She didn't have the chocolate, she didn't have the sweets. But you now when central eating came along and people stayed in, people got lazy, junk food, more sugar in the diet. That's what changed everything. Do you know you're right? And and do you know what's really interesting? I've been looking at my central heating thermometer this year. And when it goes above 20, when it goes to 20, I am boiling hot. Now I used to feel the cold all the time and it you know it, even if it was 20 this time of year but just because of whether you know where the uh, thermostat is it never seems to be warm enough now i've just done a massive job this year of detoxing i'm boiling all the time well most of the time <laughs> it's, it's, your, it's your therm it's your thermobolic clock it's your regulator it's your thyroid gland it really is down to what your body's got in nutrients one of the big things, and it's a very good one to explain, like people trying to lose weight and everything, your body is trying to regulate temperature. So by taking a cold shower, and it's been on TikTok quite a lot of people having cold therapy. Can you just, but just pause just one second. Is it going a bit sure. funny, the, the, the sound going a bit funny on your end? Yours is pausing a bit, but is mine okay? Hang on a minute. I don't know, you sound like a... <laughs> You sounded a bit like a robot. Oh dear. <laughs> Let me just uh, if, if it, see if that works. Can you press the mic on and off? And then we'll yeah. ask uh, if you just turn your mic off and on again and just see if that might work. So Christina's asked a question, by the way, about how to get rid of parasites, but we'll get, we are going to get onto that. Yeah. Just don't forget. Just Christina, being a <laughs> are getting a lapse every now and again but nothing serious okay what was that? oh that's it i've got you back now so all right Chris, christina's uh uh asking some comments i'm reading the comments here and i, and I can hear your voice now okay Thank you. great so sorry matt car carry on i was just saying on tiktok there's a lot of people doing um uh, tiktoks of like cold therapy 
and we said about you know, the, the body regenerating and uh, the cold therapy, what it does to the body as far as regeneration. We are living a bit too warm. We put the central heating on, we're getting a bit soft about things. Just two, three minutes of cold therapy or a cold shower, it invigorates the body. You'll come out of a, a cold shower th feeling very refreshed. And a lot of reasons because basically it brings the blood to the surface of the skin, it allows cells to regenerate, and you do feel great for it. Wow. You know, I have taken cold showers before, but I'm just not a fan of it, you know. But <laughs> you know what? The way that you've just explained it, it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Because you've got to have, you've got to get your veins to really vasodilate and then really vasodilate. You know, it's a bit like doing a big stretching exercise, isn't it? And it maybe is. you're motivated now, me now, explaining that. So, and, and you know, a lot of people swear by it and... Um, yeah, they're definitely healthier. I've seen it. I don't think we're ready to go plunging into the sea in uh, January, <laughs> but um, it literally is. You now, that few moments in the shower, it, it is a couple of minutes, makes a lot of difference. Fantastic. Now, if we look I, at I, that, even at night time and what the body's doing as well, what we're saying about stress and things like that, to have a shower at night, even at, at you know, just we'll go on to the, the cold, the, the warmer side of things. When you're having a shower or a bath, you're body's absorbing the liquids and the water and everything. So you can put uh, bicarbonate soda and salts in the bath and your body absorbs them. Your skin is like a sponge. It'll take in minerals that way. But if you're having a shower, even a short shower before bed, there's a lot of benefits to the body because basically you're bringing all the blood to the surface. One thing that does is then when you come out of the shower and if you allow yourself just to dry, that evaporation lowers your body temperature. And I was saying before about you know, digesting and stressing the bodies. We've got to look how, how we relax the body as well. So when the evaporation of the water is taking the temperature away, our body actually tends to relax. When it's mm -hmm. relaxing, it's actually it's increasing melatonin and serotonin levels because you're cooling the body without the body needing to do it itself. The blood's in the surface, it's evaporating off, and you're cooling down. What tends to happen then? You get a fantastic night's sleep because your body is relaxing. All the stresses are going away, all that blood's all letting the heat get away from the body and you'll go to bed feeling amazing. Wow, I've never, I don't usually get a, a shower at night, but that's definitely something worth thinking about. Um, and getting your body to regenerate at night with a night's sleep is just absolutely uh, critical. But just yeah. before we go there, because I just want to just get to Christina's question about how to get rid of parasites. And yeah. it just seems to be a big topic at the minute. And it's something I've started looking at, into in the, in the sort of last year. I mean, I didn't realise, like, like what, what you said, Matt, that probably 70% of people have these parasites. And But if you think about it, there are more cells that are not us in our bodies than there are us. They're and really I've been seeing recently, like you can you can find telltale signs in people's eyes. They'll be in the kidneys. They're in the skin. They're in the gut. They're in everywhere. And what we want to do is we want to get rid of the bad guys because they're taking over our mind. They're saying us, "Oh, you want chocolate?" But they no, it's they that want chocolate, not we it that is. want the chocolate. It's and exactly I, that. I swear by diatomaceous earth. Yes. And I found this out about about a year ago. And I put it in all the capsules that, that, that I make and I give it to the, the my pets as well. Sorry, I found out out about longer than that, six years ago, but I didn't realise humans could have it. And I did it as a flea treatment and a worm treatment for the chickens. Yeah. And so I've got to say, I feel so much benefit from it because the way that I describe diatomaceous earth is it, it's a little bit like the our our goody version of graphene oxide. It's, it's made of yeah. these tiny silicate organisms that have you know died a long time ago and they've got a very very high surface area to volume ratio exactly. so they trap things and pull them in so does bentonite clay which is something you can have a buff with and i didn't realize you could also ingest bentonite clay so those are those are two great anti uh, parasitics that, that i would recommend have, have you got any favorites there's them um pumpkin seeds it's that simple pumpkin seeds no, there's uh, chemical compounds in pumpkin seeds. You can grind them up, take a teaspoon, and they will go in and be the uh, the hitmen. 
Now, yes. They'll go and do a, a very, very good job to the point. No, I, I do. I, I foster dogs and we give it to the dogs as well. I, I don't deworm the dogs. I give them pumpkin seeds. Now, there's That's lots of natural cool. ways of doing it. That's absolutely that. That's it. I always forget about pumpkin seeds, you know, and uh, they are absolutely phenomenal. And at the end of um, Halloween, when, when everybody had their pumpkins out, I said, Save me the seeds, save me the seeds, because I was going <laughs> to give them to the chickens. Um, yep. because, um, but I've never saved any for myself, and 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 I am going to do that. Uh, but these little things, I mean, I rave on about nuts and seeds, you know, all, all day long because. They really are, are just so magical. From black seed to yes. that we've got so many healing properties, and, and I take that every day, to, you know, pumpkin seeds, apricot kernels. I mean, goodness me. They, these things are extremely powerful because they've got to grow a whole, a whole life, haven't they? They've got to grow a whole plant, but a bit like how the stem cells do that. So for us... And therefore, try to invigorate the body, but also sleep and letting your gut rest. And you speak a lot about this, and I think it's brilliant about how you can stimulate your stem cells to to regenerate your body. And I wonder if you yeah. could chat about that a bit. I think one of the things that we need to understand, and if we look at, and we did mention about Lyme disease and other things that are degenerative to the body, if we look at how the body, like I said, we, with the car, we go to the mechanic, we get the filters changed, we do the service. What can we do as human beings if you look at what pharma does and what medicinal usage is something like lyme disease then they'll go for stem cell therapy and they'll do things like that what our body does after about 12 to 14 hours of fasting it starts to regenerate so where we're saying about changing the filters after about 12 hours our body's saying right i need to go i need a fuel source where am i going to get this fuel source that's where our it'll go to the fat cells and it'll what we've stored when it does that, though, it allows us to get rid of the bad. So what stayed in there, stayed in our gut, it now needs to do something about it. And after 12 hours, that's when it's going to do it. So fasting, it'll get rid of and it'll purge the system, clean the filters. But at about 14 hours, our body starts to generate stem cells. So after that, so the, the fasting is actually the repair. When somebody's poorly, if they don't have anything to eat, the body gets rid of things quicker and it starts to regenerate itself. It cleans it. And it then puts the stem cells back in and the repair starts. That's why it is a matter of rest up. We're encouraged to eat, have the sicky soup, have the chicken soup. And all you're doing is prolonging it. Have the paracetamol. That's suppressing your body signals to say, work, generate, regenerate. Stem cells, 14, 16 hours, 18 hours. People are scared that they're going to starve. The body can live over a week with no food. Water's critical. Water we need on a regular basis. But food, when we're poor, when our body's trying to get rid Stop giving it another challenge. When it, Every time it's eating, like I said before, you're stressing your gut. Your gut's not going to repair when it's trying to digest. When it's starving and there's nothing in your stomach, then it's starting to repair. It's eating the bad guys. It's getting rid and cleansing. Yes. Um, and I'm, I'm just reading just a message from uh, Christina just to try and think about the timings here. Does fasting include overnight while you're asleep or do you have to fast while you're awake? And I think... You know, the answer to that is um, your, gut, your gut must rest for a minimum of 12 hours. If you can leave it 16 hours a day, you will be regenerating every single day. And we've just said we live in a toxic world, so we have to do this more and more. So people start their fast at different times. But, you know, <clears throat> if you don't, it depends on when you can eat your evening meal. But let's say you don't eat anything after six o'clock. If you then don't break your fast, which people say is breakfast, and I think it's a morning thing, it's like, no, it's whenever you eat after your gut's rested. So you haven't, you know, if you ate your last meal at six o'clock at night, well, 16 hours is, is like 10 o'clock the following morning. Have I got that right? 12, 14, yep. typically. Yeah. So, but if you eat at eight o'clock at night, you can't, you know, don't eat till 12 o'clock in the, in the afternoon. But it's definitely easier. To, to, to do it overnight obviously rather than the day because you can't do it and you can't eat at night because you'll be asleep because you should get a it's good eight hours of sleep right it, it, it is easier and if you're not digesting overnight your body's not no you don't go to sleep on a heavy meal because like i said you're stressing the body if you we, the first initial fast i suggest to anybody is called a 16 8 when the 16 8 is is really down to your lifestyle you now what you're doing socially i commute an awful lot 
Um, so for me, it works out having an evening meal is better for me, but I've still got my time. So breakfast is the most important part of meal of the day. It's complete and utter rubbish. Actually slows you down for the day. You're giving your body stress. You're trying to get through the day and your gut's saying, I need to d- digest and you're slowing down. So I eat between uh, about seven o'clock and nine o'clock. I eat one meal a day. And I'm definitely not withering away. I'm like 15 and a half stone. I'm not a small guy. But I don't need to eat three meals a day. That's fantastic. And I really would like to get to that point. This last week, I've been fasting for probably 18, 20 hours a day. I've, I've, eaten, I've eaten at sort of lunchtime ish, whenever that is. And then something quite a good thing to break my fasting. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and then a meal sort of early evening. And then that's been it. And that's a, that's a much healthier habit than I have been getting into. And it wasn't yeah. that difficult. And I'll tell you what, one reason why it wasn't that difficult, because I don't know if you've noticed this, um, the guys that are listening. If you, you know when you, when you then eat your breakfast, whatever that is, um, you it makes you hungry, doesn't it? It makes you want to eat again. Now, that's quite critical because it depends on how you break your fast as to what happens then. If you break your fast with um, anything with sugar in, because your gut's rested, it, your gut is then in, the, in, a, in, a, in a readiness state and it pulls whatever you've just ingested, it, it really pulls everything in. So, for instance, your insulin levels will spike three times as much when on a fasted gut when you take sugar. So the worst possible thing you can take is like, I don't know, cereal with sugar on or coffee with milk and sugar in. And because then what happens is for the rest of the day, you're chasing that dragon because you get this high and you can never get it back until you've rested your gut. So I try and break my fast on on, um, on nuts and seeds if I can. And I do like, like I might have like boiled eggs avocado mixed with nuts and seeds that's amazing with some lemon juice that's very alkaline or kefir with nuts and seeds in but I try and avoid sugar and I try and avoid caffeine because I know I'm going to get a real high and I can't get it but I know that Matt you also have another suggestion for breaking fast which I've never heard before which sounds brilliant which was that sorry Joe? yeah about fiber Oh, fibre, yes. And, and you actually said, it, I don't know if you said it inadvertently, break fast, breakfast. Right. It's the same thing. And if you look at what we take for breakfast, and most people take for breakfast, it's milk and cereal. Milk is sugar. It's lactose. It is a sugar. And you're breaking fast in the wrong way. And we, we need to touch on this on a, a separate one. Diabetes and insulin levels. When you've been fasting overnight, you've not eaten anything. If you give it sugar, you're going to spike. If you can put it there with fibre instead... And every meal, the sequence of how you eat and what you eat makes a huge difference. Your gut is only like literally one cell thick and it'll take things in very quickly. If you're ready for food, if you have the fiber first, it creates a barrier then to stop the sugar digesting quite as fast. And it stops the insulin spike. So if we've got any diabetics that are actually listening, by eating the fiber first, then going into the carbs and into the, the proteins, it makes a huge difference on the insulin spike. It might be the same meal, but the order in which you eat it makes a huge difference. That's magic, that is. And that's very true. And where are your favourite sources of fibre? I mean, when I've looked at my clients, my personal trainer, and I've looked at my own diet, I found fibre is the most difficult to get into people's bodies. It's horrific difficult it really is and it really is down to the veggies into the greens and you know um there are a lot of supplements out there it's one i do struggle with and i'll be honest i do use supplements for that mm-hmm. I, I i listen me, me too as well and one of the things that i i, I take um just because it's difficult to find out that you've got them got the most but one of the things that i realized is a lot of the vegetables that we peel we don't need to peel and that's no, where all the fiber is Yep. <laughs> there's so many things like butternut squash and um and I, I always just thought you had to peel these things and so i said no just put it in the oven this year for the first time i've tried it and i'm like it tastes amazing or we're not supposed to be peeling most pretty much everything you, that we've been by the fiber the fiber is the husk it is the coating and it is. we've just rid of it we, we just took putting that in the trash 
it is. And and then, you know, the, then the other thing to look at is, you know, when you buy nuts and seeds, for the majority, it just depends, because some of them have, like, tannins and things on the outside, but for the majority, the nuts and seeds, don't get them washed with the husk taken off, because that's your fibre. It is. And then things like, uh, you can get inulin, um, but maca root, I've got to say, I speak about maca all the time. I love, love maca root. It is high in fibre. But, and, and one of the reasons why it won't work so well is it's from Peru, it's Peruvian, it's grown up high up there. And I started taking it because I, I was stressed out at work and I needed some focus. And someone said, try Maca. This is like quite a few years ago. And I just could not believe how focused I was all day. Why was it focused? Because my hormone levels, my glucose levels were balanced throughout the exactly. day. And really, the really why? Because of taken the 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 uh, fiber and that's what it as well as the other magical stuff in there but it is the fiber and it it's completely changed my life it is if you look at the foods now as well we go to the, the shops and we get the vegetables and everything they haven't got the fiber content they had even 30 years ago washed they're all washed as well everything's and... washed we've got glyphosates on there we've got contaminants on there and it's a big thing we've said about the environment you can try and be healthy, but it's a matter of reading the labels and try and get back to basics. Yeah, and so, you know, I, I think, Matt, we, we probably um, could talk about this for, um, you know, for a long time, and we, we really should come back and, and have a conversation about this. But the one thing we just want to say to people is, look, you're alive now, despite everything, and you never knew anything. You're alive. <laughs> so imagine how alive you can be once you start learning this stuff and if you yeah. just put a few things into practice you can um you know you can really change how you feel you're not doing it because it's a diet or because somebody told you on the telly you're doing it because you will feel more energetic you'll feel better so it, i mean matt well what was your top three i don't know to do things would you recommend people do the takeaways from from today let the body do what it needs to do. Your body's a fantastic machine. Now give it the water, change them filters, have that rest, remove the stress, breathe. Take that moment, that 10 minutes, just breathe. Take that fresh air, get some sunlight, just relax with things. Now we can look at diet, we can go into specifics, we can help people, people do the research. Don't try and suppress things. When you've got the cold, let the cold, you know, drink the fluids, rest the gut, take your time now everything else just delays that just keep relaxed about things fantastic and, and if anybody doesn't know please join my telegram group i've got a plant power group and natural medicine we only talk about this topic and we really try and share personal experiences so people and, and me like we'll have a video saying oh i've tried this to make this new syrup or this is what I've broke my fast on today or I've tried this new it's really a, a little hands-on group and there are so many knowledgeable people on there people and and say well you know I'm thinking about changing this what can I do I've got asthma what shall I do it's a fantastic group it's a pretty small group um, and we just try and keep it like really really super friendly so if you're not uh, on there already I'll welcome you to join um, you'll be able to find the link in my bio. You go to link the tree and you can see all my one, but the plant power group is where you need to be. And anything that that, that Matt can share about um, the sort of stuff he's talk, talked about today or I can share, I'm going to put in that group. So I'll, I'll write a link in the, the comments there just in case uh, you guys can't find it. But Matt, I think we should get back and carry on this conversation because, you yeah. know, Matt, it's been... This progresses into diabetes. It progresses into so many things. And you mentioned Lyme's disease today, and I'm hearing this a lot. I've got Lyme's disease, and it's been a year, and it's critical. I don't know what to do. And, um, you know, you, you've mentioned some things today, um, and diabetes is also something. And these things are totally curable. They are, 100%. And if you guys want to write anything in the comments... Uh, please let us know. Join the Plant Power Group if you want to talk about it beforehand. But Matt, if you can come back and we can basically cover these topics of diabetes, Lyme disease, and go into some specifics. Now we've done the groundwork, then, you know, that, that would be amazing. Would you mind doing that? I'd love to. Thank you so much. Have you got Thank any you last things to say? Have you got any, any last things to say? I could go on all night. Let's just keep it positive. <laughs> Everyone, now take a deep breath. No. 
they can. The deep breath, the deep breath. I might even go get a shower now. Thank you so <laughs> much, Matt. You've been absolutely yeah, amazing. Thank you, everybody, for joining, and uh, thank you for all your questions. Blessings, you. everyone. Have a great day. Yeah. Bye yeah. now. Bye bye.